video, I want to take a look at how to perform an IBSS or Internet Base Station Survey in Trimble Access 2023.10. So in a previous video, I showed you how to set up a survey style for an IBSS survey in Access. And this video is going to cover, you got survey style done, how do I get a project job set up and actually perform a, an IBSS survey. So I've got Trimble Access open. I'm on the projects page when you first open it up. Now, in in this, I don't have a project loaded, so there's two ways to do this. You can either create a project in the office and download it to the collector, or you can create a project um, on the data collector and upload it to the cloud. The key thing is you have to have a project that's on the cloud because the base station correction stream that we're going to create to do this uh, internet-based rover survey is going to live inside the project on the cloud. So up here at the top where I've got the icon of a person, that's my Trimble Connect sign-in. So you do have to have a Trimble ID and you have to click there and you have to sign in. I'm already signed in with my Trimble ID, but you'll need to sign in so that you can create a project and put it on the cloud or you can download a project from the cloud. All right, so that's step one, sign in. Step two is going to be to either download that project or create a project. In this case, I'm going to create a project. So I'll click new and I'll give my project a name. I'm just going to call this survey one. You do have to put a name in, description, reference, location, and image are all optional. You can put those in if you want to. So I'll enter that and create it. And then since I don't have a job already in this project, it's, it's automatically going to prompt me to create a job. So I'll just create one, call it survey one again. I'm working in North Carolina, we're a U.S. survey foot state, so I'll keep my template at U.S. survey feet so my units get loaded properly. But I, since I'm doing a GNSS survey, I do want a coordinate system, not scale of one. So I'll click down here where it says scale of one. Go to select from library. I'm working in the U.S. I want to be on state plane, so my system's going to be United States NAT 83. If you're working somewhere else, just pick the system that matches your location. Then I do need to set my zone. Again, I'm in North Carolina, so I'm going to click the N on the keyboard and then tap North Carolina 3200. I do want to use a geoid model, so I'll set that to yes. And the geoid model I'm going to use is geoid 18. For this example, I'm going to use grid coordinates, and I'll put a project height in of 350 feet. Uh, the project height is basically an ellipsoid height for your area, and Trimble Access uses this if it has to create any scale factors or do any COGO that involves scale factors, um, and it's got points in the, in the job that do not have elevations that you're using. So you're not really going to use this very often, but you do have to put it in there. So remember, this is an ellipsoid height, not a ground elevation. Here on the East Coast, that's about 100 foot lower than a ground elevation. It might vary depending on where you are, but just put in a project height that's going to be pretty close to the area you're working in. Once that's in there, I'll click Enter and Store. And now I've got my job set up. So I'll tap Accept. And it goes back to the uh, to the main screen in Trimble Access. Now, before I start my IBSS survey, I have to upload that project to the cloud. Remember I said it's very important that project has to be on the cloud or our base station data stream is not going to have anywhere to live. So I'll tap the menu button at the top left, tap on my project there, and then with my project highlighted, and I only got one project, so it's easy, but if you have multiple projects in the list, just highlight the one you want to upload. Come over here to the three dots and click the upload button. I'm working in North America, so I'll choose that server. If you're somewhere else in the world, just choose the server that's closest to your location. And then I am using a Connect Business for Trimble Access license there, so I'll click Yes. And Access will go ahead and set the project up on the cloud. You'll see there I got a cloud icon with a check next to it. That way I know that my project is now on the cloud. So I'll click open to open the project, open again to open the job. Now I'm ready to go ahead and start my survey. So I'll need to place something like a MiFi hotspot or a phone with a hotspot there at my base station so that the base station can get on the internet send its corrections up to the Trimble Connect cloud, and then the rover can tap into the cloud and get the corrections out there in the field. So you will need to put a, a hotspot over there. I've got my hotspot hot turned on, got it set up by my base station, so I'm ready to start it up. I'll go to the menu at the top left, click measure, 
There's my IBSS survey style there that we created earlier. So I'll tap that and I'm going to start the base receiver. So once it connects up to the base station, it's going to ask us to choose our base station stream name. Now, this is a brand new project, so there's not a stream in this project. So we'll click create down at the bottom and give our stream a name. Now, just do something that you can recognize, right? It's easy for you to figure out what base it is. Um, you know, you could call it like crew one base. I'm going to go ahead and put my name on there, Mark underscore base. That way I know it's my base I'm connected to, right? But you could put serial number, type of receiver. Just put something on there so that it's easy to recognize that you're, co you're connecting up to the correct stream. So I'll click create there. And now that's set up, so I'll accept that. And now we're ready to start the, uh, the base station up. But since this is the first time we've set this up, we're going to have to scan to find our Wi-Fi hotspot. If you use the same hotspot and the same receiver over and over and over again, it will connect up automatically the next time you use it. But if you switch hotspots or switch receivers with the hotspot, you will have to scan the first time you use it to get that set up. So I'll click the scan button down at the bottom, and it's going to look for uh, available Wi-Fi hotspots. There's my Verizon MiFi in the list, so I'll choose it. Software is telling me that my hotspot does have an encryption key, so I'll click there and put the key in and go ahead and accept it. And now it will the receiver will go ahead and try to hook up to the internet, get an IP address, and so I can hit accept down here at the bottom. <clears throat> and it'll tell me once it's actually hooked up to the internet and pulls an IP address and we'll be ready to go ahead and start the survey. All right, once it hooks up to the internet, it's going to ask me for the point name. If you've got a control file already in the data collector, you can just key in the point name for the base. For this example, I don't. I just created a new job. I don't have any points in here, so I'm going to do a here position just to get an autonomous position to get the base started for us. So you can either do a here position and correct it later, like I'm going to do, or if you have your points in there, just key in your point number. So I'll tap the black arrow, go to key in, put a point number in there, and hit the here button to go ahead and grab an autonomous coordinate. Then I'll tap store, check my antenna height to make sure it is correct. I'm two meters to the bottom of quick release. That's good. So I'll tap the start button. So now the survey started. You'll see I have an internet symbol with a green check up here at the top, letting me know that my base is on the internet. So that's good. The base has started. I can click OK turn on my rover, make sure I've got an internet source at the rover, either a SIM card in my data collector or a MiFi hotspot, phone hotspot with my rover, and I'm ready to go ahead and start my rover survey. So I'll tap the menu up at the top left, tap measure, and I'll tap IBSS again. This time I'm going to measure points, and the software will go ahead and switch over to the rover. So once my rover hooks up to the internet, it'll pop up with a window that shows available base stations. There's my Mark base. It's putting out CMRX, just like we set it up in the survey style. So I can select that, click accept down at the bottom, and we'll go ahead and hook up to the base station and start receiving corrections. Up here at the top again, I've got my internet symbol with a green check. So I know that I'm getting I know that I'm getting corrections from the base station. And once my receiver is initialized, I'll have the green check up at the top and I'm ready to go ahead and start measuring points. Now when I'm done, I want to go back to the menu at the top left, go to measure and choose NGNSS survey and I can power down the rover. And then I'll go back over to the base station and end it. Click the menu at the top left, go to measure, choose my IBSS survey, and choose to end the GNSS base survey. And so once my data collector has connected up to the base station, I can go ahead and choose to power the base down. In this case, I'm going to leave the base on because I want to start it up one more time and show you what it looks like when you already have the data collector um, 
paired up with your hotspot that you don't have to search again. So I'm going to answer no to this. I turned off my rover, but I want to start the base one more time. So once you've actually connected your base up to your hotspot, if you use the same ones over and over again and you have a stream already created in a project, um, you don't have to search for it anymore. You don't have to create the stream anymore. It's a really quick and seamless process. Now, if you do change projects, you'll have to create a new stream, but you still shouldn't have to search for your hotspot again as long as you keep the same hotspot and the same receiver together all the time. So I'll go back up to the menu, go to measure, choose IBSS, and start the base receiver again. And you'll see immediately it goes up and it finds that stream we've already created, so I can accept that. And now I don't have to search for my hotspot anymore. It's just going to go ahead and start the survey. I've already got a point in there, so I can put the point number in, hit enter, and go ahead and start my base survey up. So the first time you have to look for your, uh, you have to look for your your hotspot. And if you're in a new project, you'll have to create the stream. But if you're working in the same project, you're working with the same hotspot, same receiver. It's a really simple, quick process to get your base up and running on the internet.